So next up, we'll move into how to build a build a pitch. And uh, initially, of course, uh, we know that uh, the the pitch is more about uh, usually most commonly towards pitching for investors. But of course, that's that's not just that one case. You can be pitching for an idea competition. You could be pitching for a project. You could pitch for a partnership. You could pitch to find additional team members. Uh, you could pitch to apply for an accelerator, um, and, and so forth. But the basic structure, without going um, yet into more detail, is you should have that kind of snapshot of those key elements of what the company is about. And then when it comes to the value part, you should define what is the problem that you are looking to solve, uh, what is your solution, what is the market, uh, then about your team, and then the ask. And the ask depends on what you're asking. If you're looking for uh, additional co-founder, if you're looking for a partnership, if you're looking for money, if you're looking for grants, if you're looking for for crowd investment, if you're looking for uh, access to partnership program, then that's that's your ask. So if we look at this in more detail, so you know, starting with the problem, so whatever the problem may be, this really should help give co a context for the audience. So you want to start with the problem instead of the solution so that uh, you can get the, the uh, attention, uh, attention of the audience. So if there is an, isn't a problem, then why does it look like? Why is there a solution needed? Uh, so starting with the problem, if you start with the solution, the audience will be thinking of, okay, what would I use this for? What is the solution? for was it good for and it also means that um, it's very hard to do validation because now there is nothing to, to, to test against whether the problem actually exists or that it's not yet tested at all. So it may be it may be very very uh, many things inefficiency, high price, poor technology, unmet need, uh, whatever that may be. Then, of course, uh, there's always some ways to figure out a problem, how the problem is solved today. So what alternative solutions, if there is no direct competitor who's already doing exactly the solution that you're looking to build, but how are they managing it now? Like, how are they doing it with manual ways or with old tools or, or, or with help of their friends or whatever that may be? How are they solving the problem? today. What is the scale of the problem? Like, uh, is it a big problem that many have? Or is it a small problem that many have? Or is it a big problem that few have? But how is it uh, uh, a potentially a, a problem for a bigger uh, opportunity? And the key here is that if the audience don't understand the context, they can't start to understand the solution either. So they keep thinking more in their head than they are listening to the pitch. And the solution, the more you can show pictures, the better. And to start with the product solution or picture, and of course better if you can say with the physical product here's a physical product, this is the solution. We have all seen those, probably those pitches many times, and the more there is product visible, available, understandable, the, the, the faster it is for audience to understand. Of course, you, you, you want to make sure that they understand the product, product correctly. So if, it's, if, it's, if, if they don't understand it correctly by presenting a simple one image, then, then, then you want to do a more extensive approach to that. And that can be done explaining through customer experience. So you could do a um, quick customer experience from how the customers are solving their problem today and how would they solve their problem uh, using your solution. 
depending on how obvious that is uh, the problem, uh, you may need to you need you can adjust or you can skip the, the how we are solving it today and just show how you're solving with your solution. And there's always a customer journey. That's that there's always how customers use the product, even if it's not a digital product, even if it's a digital product, even if it's a new AI product or if it's a, a voice activated product, there's always a journey that customer goes through and that's the customer experience. So how do they start using the product and where does the, the end of the key journey end? Like the most important problem they are using it to solve. So listening music on the Spotify, you could show the customer experience compared to listening music on the CD or iTunes, picking individual songs and so forth. So you can create mock-up screens, you can do a PowerPoint, you can do Google Slides, just putting icons and things there and you can put slide after slide and you can click one second, two second within each of the slide very quickly go through that journey. You don't have to have a physical product for that. But if you ask people to imagine, then use that part so that they can imagine your company or organization, the market, something that you can't just put in the picture uh, or you want them to be inspired through asking them to imagine something. But do not ask them to imagine your product. That's your job, that's your responsibility to make it very clear what the product is and what it does and what the value is. And if you can't communicate the value through the customer journey, how do they capture value by using the product, then you're failing already. And this pitching is a very good area also because there's so many pitching opportunities available there to also use it to test whether your solution, uh, see whether the audience agree your solution is delivering value, even if they are not yet using the product. And you don't need to have a physical product, this, and you don't need to have a coders, developers to actually make that product exist and work. Just create five screens where you say user clicks here, then they click there, and you can show them the whole product journey from the key journey, you don't have to show here's how they register and here you sign in, that's given. Here's you start, here's where customer has signed in, they have existing account and they're doing this action, this action, and this is how they get the value. So make your solution really understandable, but put it in the context of having a problem already. The less audience needs to imagine your product, the more they can focus on use of the product and the business potential and the value that it delivers. The more they have to spend time on understanding the product, the less they will have time to focus on what potential deliver or use or business potential that has. It's really, really, if you get this right, and I've seen tons and tons of pitches where it's totally unclear what the product actually is, how it works, how, it done, how you do it. If you ask anyone, if I say, imagine a car. Now, I bet all the different people would imagine different cars. Someone gives a pickup car, someone thinks of Tesla, someone thinks of, of an old car, someone thinks of cheap car. Someone thinks of used car, someone thinks of a Mercedes, someone thinks of BMW, someone thinks of family car. So don't ask people to imagine products because they will imagine their own version of your product and your whole pitch may be sinking just because of that. So next up, what is the market? So what is the target market? Uh, this is again coming from your vision, um, put it in the pitch, show, visualize your market however best you can, put pie charts or put different size of, of, of market comparing, for example, that, that uh, this is a, a size of a market in our country and this is the 
global market, these are our target market. So this is uh, put it in context of something where people can understand and resonate the size, area, uh, and, and any other relevant aspects of that is also related to your market uh, market uh, entry. And uh, describe the market development, so whether that's how much is it growing, how much it's shrinking, how much uh, transition is happening, uh, how much disruption is happening, why is it happening, what are the mega trends behind that, like what is the driving factor of the market change, whatever that change is, and how are you looking to apply your uh, solution into that market um, to, to win in that market or gain market share or gain a position to begin with. What is your ambition level? Like here, uh, it's very important that you have that aligned vision. It should be the inspiration, it should be the, the part that really gets people excited. Now they know there's a market problem, they understand the market, they understand your solution, but they want to know how big that can be. Like, and how big do you believe it can be? And if you don't believe it's big, and if you can't communicate that to the audience, then why would the audience think it's a big opportunity? Like, if you can't believe it, why would the audience believe it? But that's why it's called vision. It doesn't have to happen next next year or next month or, or, or so forth. That's why it's 10 years outlook. But when you're looking at that, make sure that you take into account all the different things that can happen in 10 years with competition, with uh, other actors, with different other market changes and trends and so forth, as you should have in the formation uh, work. And then, how are you going to enter the market? So this is the roadmap and the strategy combined, how are you navigating, but this is specifically the market entry side of that. So how are you entering to market? Are you partnering with the big company? Are you launching it as an online product in English speaking countries? Are you doing it in your home market first? Are you doing city by city? Like some food delivery companies, so like uh, Uber did in the beginning. Uh, or what is, what is the market entry strategy? And how do you go from where are you today? What are you going to do next? And when you've uh, accomplished that, how are you going to do the, the following steps? And it doesn't have to be in detail, but there has to be some kind of understandable path um, to, to communicate. So what is the market? Where is it heading? What is your ambition level? How are you going to enter that market? And how are you going to, how are you going to get to the, the next levels coming from that? And then be very open, be very clear about what the risks are, because if you're not seeing the risks, everyone else are seeing many risks. The more experienced they are, the more risks they are seeing, and the, 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 the what function they represent. If they're lawyers, they see nothing but risks. If they're accountants, they see risks that accountants see. If they're operations person, they see all the operational risks. So make sure that you have Identify clearly what are the risks and be open to communicate about those. It just shows your professionalism that you have identified and you know what the risks are. If you have no risks, it's, it's, it does, that such thing doesn't exist. It's more of what they are, how big they are, and then how you are navigating those risks, how you are looking to navigate those risks. And any other relevant things that may be specific to your market. Uh, is what you should be looking at to communicate for the audience and really take the pitch as an opportunity to also drive the audience thinking. I think we all know the, the, the best magician in this world uh, that is, is past Steve Jobs, how well he was able to create the, and drive the audience thinking. So your pitch doesn't have to be in that level, but take the, 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 the take the driver's seat for for the for the audience. And then your team. And the key things to communicate about the team is, of course, present the team. So put uh, the people visible. Uh, we all like to 
uh, associate and understand things through to people. Um, it, it makes it more human. Uh, so, so pictures, if they are there, on, uh, don't necessarily bring them on the stage, but if, if they are there, have them there, but don't necessarily put everyone to pitch. It can get confusing for the audience. But present the team, uh, make them visible, make them their roles very clearly visible, and their expertise. And anything that you can put achievement of anything that specifically communicates about their skills and about their roles uh, is, is a strong point. It doesn't need to be anything to do with the business even, or not necessarily even the skills, but for example, if there's a, a business guy and, and, and you, you, you can put that uh, has successfully brought a meetup group to our city and organized 25 meetups with the growing volume of participants in the past year tells a lot about their skills for those who understand how difficult it is to get the meetup going and to get it growing and organize events repeatedly. Or whether it's, it's uh, have been working uh, five years with open source projects considered as one of the lead uh, expert in this type of software uh, environment or whatever that may be. So some key achievements. So don't tell what they know, but what they have actually achieved with that knowledge, whatever that may be. It can be from student groups, it can be from family activities, it can be even from hobbies. Something that communicates their ability, their attitude, commitments and things like that. Uh, some relevant key lessons learned. So if someone has already paid their dues, they have made some mistakes and they have learned from that, then that's like money in the bank. They will most likely not make that uh, mistake again and they have learnings. So if, if there's learnings, uh, those are also very interesting and valuable. It can be just one you know, statement that puts this under the picture and not just like this is a tech guy and this is a business guy and they are very good in what they do because everyone puts that. If there's connections, family connections, business connections, association connections, uh, volunteer activity-based connections, uh, Twitter, Facebook, whatever that is that you can say, hey, in this industry they're considered as you know, the, the most active and respected guy for the Twitter hashtag for IoT, like whatever communicates uh, these types of things. Again, valuable. Then whatever you can tell as a team, so how have you combined these individual talents and what makes it a good team? Because in individual talent put together doesn't yet mean it's a good as a team. So what can you tell that why are you a good team? You can tell all the things that you have learned through the formation phase of putting the team together. You can have past history that you have worked together in a previous company. Whatever tells that there is less team conflict issues ahead uh, is positive. So if there's anything that can describe that there's a sense of, 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 um, of, of team and not just talented individuals put together, is important. And here is also the ownership split, how the equity ownership is divided should communicate that. So you have to make sure that everything is uh, consistent. So if you're telling all the great things about the team and how everything works together and how everything is committed, but then one owns 80% and others only have 5% and you have not yet done anything, like there's something off. And you have to understand this, that, that uh, that, and if you think you can hide the ownership levels and you're pitching for investors, it's, it's just going to be delayed. In the due diligence process, it will be clear. There is no such thing. You have to be transparent uh, in this before asking others to make commitments in things that can potentially be harmful. And of course, it can. it's totally possible that you are 
not yet having a great team and you're clearly missing key elements, that's okay as well. You can say this is the plan, how we are looking, you can have like question marks and this is specifically if you're also looking to recruit those team members, it's like these are what we're looking for. Or uh, a bit later phase, it can also be saying that we have these types of experts already lined up. They can take equity risk, they can take commitment risk at this phase, but they are committed to joining the company when we raise our first you know, investor round, if that's the case. If they are more like senior expertise or whatever, or they are committed in another company, they can take a founder level commitment role, or whatever the reasons may be. But if you can say we have these doctors, we have these uh, scientists, we have these people who are ready to join the team, then it at least shows that you have accomplished also a certain level of that. <clears throat> but for them, it's also then uh, usually a much lower ownership level because they don't take the first first uh, first validation risk and they skip that and want to join later. But you may also need them to join later, and you necessarily don't don't uh, can't expect to get uh, everything in one go. So that's from the team team perspective. Uh, the point to really try to communicate why this team, why that you have looked at the skills and different aspects and ownership balance and, and, and achievements networks, why is this team put together and why is it so good? Not just saying so, but giving context. And then finally, the relevant ask. So the relevant meaning that you should not try to pitch for money in the, in the event that is not meant for that. So make sure that the ask, so that you update the, the, not, not only this, this segment of the pitch, but also the presentation to resonate. Uh, in, if you, the more you can put it into the context of audience, like a simple thing can be if you go to another city, then use uh, a city syllable, silhouette image, for example, in some of the opening slides or something to show the audience that you, you have actually uh, cared for them. Or you can do it outside the presentation material itself in the context of, of other things. But specifically for the ask, if you're looking for team members, then make a slide that clearly defines what role, uh, what specific equity is available or equity considerations are available, what is the offering, um, what is the journey uh, looking like or whatnot. So if it's a more generic audience that there's all different types, then put all the things that you're looking for. Um, there so that uh, people can come to you and say, hey, that was interesting thing, this is this resonates with me, I have these types of skills, so I know this person, can I make introduction uh, or whatnot. So take it from the audience uh, that you are pitching towards. If you are split pitching for money, like looking for investors, specifically private money, real equity investments, then you have to get even more detailed on how are you going to use that money. So why do you need money now, not later? Uh, how much money you, and effort and resources you have spent so far? From where has that come from? How will you use the money? And don't say we're going to hire people as the first answer. Uh, you can say, we are looking to solve these problems, we are looking to build these things, and we are looking to spend money on that. We may need to hire people, we may, need to, we, we may use partners, but these are the problems we are using the money uh, to, to, to solve. And uh, the best way you can see, say about the money used is that we're going to do this anyway, and we are most likely going to accomplish these things. It just will take us longer to do so, but with money we could do it faster, we could accelerate that. So don't make the venture sound like you're desperate for the money or the only way you are going to even continue forward is that if you get the money. That's not what anyone, specifically investors, like to hear because it communicates totally the opposite than the commitment. 
like your commitment is you're going to make this happen regardless of how you ever how long it takes how you get the resources together any money anyone who joins it will be faster it will get you closer but it's not dependent on any individual thing the more you say i need your money we can't do this without you we are dependent on this i will only do this if we get this money the less interesting it is like okay like so if i don't do it then nothing happens and then that adds for the burden of of the other person and then of course most importantly what is the return of investment exit is there a buyback from the founders uh, is, is there a, a going all the way and and uh, or selling it uh, to uh, future investor rounds uh, whatever those considerations are is, is good to show some and these don't have to be if it's a public pitch they don't have to be in the in the public pitch but you should have them on the backup slides uh, for questions if they are from from audience or for private conversations but you should definitely have this considered so to summarize then how to deliver the pitch uh, covered some of these here but really make sure you know your audience so that you can tone make the tone fit for the audience uh, you don't have to consider it 100 percent uh, so that you think what they want to hear but you can also think that this this is how we make it really resonate with the audience so this is how we make it feel very different uh, but just the point know your audience and consider uh, how you want to uh, impact them and different audiences can be can be uh, captured in very different ways they're still the same people it's the context that keeps that kind of setting that that uh, that that how you should present any of these people could be any of these other situations as well but they are in a different mindset if they're if, if not fully as a different uh, personalities give context so really give context so try to get uh, each of the different things so that uh, people get quicker into the essence of things instead of trying to wonder like what does this depend on and what is now in question and, and, and so forth is it this or is it that so that's why starting with problem putting the solution showing the product and and so forth so one one way to put that in the very beginning is just work on this what is your business idea in one sentence this can be a slight modification of your mission a shorter version but think of also from this perspective how you can put uh, it's also similar to slogan uh, that you could use for example uh, the, the pitch for a one sentence description for for aliens could be it's like chores movie in space so giving an idea of how to get the audience to, to the same, same mindset. And really take control of the intention. And this is, this is uh, harder and harder with uh, people. Everyone has uh, their personal distraction devices very near them all the time. But basically this means that, that, uh, that the more you give readable slides, like I do in this, because this is a different setup, uh, and the material needs to work later on its own as well. The point being that in a pitch format, you try to show as little readable text or multiple concepts or multiple things in one slide. So you just want to make powerful uh, image heavy, one point, one slide type of things, and then rather click them quickly and then have a, a narrative in your presentation to really make the audience listen to you and get the background information and the context from the images but if you make them read and if you don't give them good context you will lose them and then they are just trying to 
think and wonder or they're trying to read and understand, uh, then, then you can control their attention. So use presentation to show related charts, headlines, images. Do not show all text in presentation and then read it, like I just did. You will lose the attention of audience reading this text. So, and you only have, in this pitch, you only have one goal. Get your audience to come ask, read more. So you are not trying to answer all of their questions in there. What you're actually trying to build is give them the sense of inspiration, give them the clear sense of understanding what you're doing, what you are about to do, and how are you going to do it in high level, but leave it open, like how does the product work exactly, or how are those steps in between? And how I, I'm wondering how they're going to do that, or I'm wondering this, I'm wondering that. But those are the nuances that first they get inspired, they understand the whole thing they are, but then very quickly they start to think of some of those things, why they want to come to you to talk to you, or why do they want to type the URL in their mobile and go to your website, and by the way, have the website then have that information they get go there for. Uh, but that's your only goal. But if you answer all of their questions and they feel, oh, okay, I get it, I get it, and they're wondering nothing. It's like, okay, but yeah. So then it will be overridden by the next pitch coming after you and the next one coming after that and after that. So you have to be memorable, but you have to leave something that is left open. So summary, make it audience, target specific. It's really a few minutes to present the customer problem solution, all of these things. Like usually it's five minutes, it can be three minutes, sometimes even without the slides. But if you think about the info commercials, like the TV shop things, those can be really annoying even if it's five minutes because you can get a lot of, if you make it clear and you make it visible and to the point, like those are, and they are very obvious. Uh, it can get very boring very quickly. So it's, but if you make it complex, then yes, five minutes may be not enough for the audience to understand, but that's not the target. Make it simple, make it effective. Use the time effectively. Use all the, all the, all the knowledge that there is available on how to deliver a good presentation. Only the most interesting highlights the key points, the understandable, and what is relevant, and then the most interesting highlights. And do not explain details. When you go explaining mode, then it's taking those things that people would be wondering afterwards away, and it also makes it a very poor narrative in how to how, how the flow of the pitch goes. And the only way to really start making that effective is practice, practice, practice. And the point here is that practice with audience. Like, yes, practice at home, practice timing, practice those different things. But the best practice is really just to go into all the different pitching events for different purposes. And, uh, and the, the more variety of the audience you can do, and of course, the more of the audience that is actually potential customers, the better. So really making the audience want to hear more. 